The War Room at Sky Sport, Tom by Matson, Jeff Wilson. We're going to talk about a number of things we've discussed over the last few weeks, and particularly around the All Blacks and what they're going to face once again this weekend. And Tabs, we started this journey talking about attack efficiency in the red zone. What does it mean once again? Well, attack efficiency is about how many points can you score with each opportunity. And it's a pretty important one, especially at this level of the game, because you might only get a couple of opportunities in the red zone in particular. And it's an area that the All Blacks have done traditionally pretty well in, but it's something we, we've highlighted um, is trending downwards over the last few years. But, but you think about the last three years, this is of the rugby championship, and the way they've managed to, and they've managed to dominate Argentina and the Wallabies, the fact we have 32, every, one out of every to three times we've been in that attack zone, but has it started to trend down? Let's take a snapshot, per se, of what has happened so far in this campaign, and it started off so well in the fact we started yeah. to regain some of our ascendancy. Absolutely. And you can see that the red, zone, the red zone efficiency here kind of reflects the games. We drew the first one. Second one was a reasonably comfortable win. Record score in game four. And you can see because the differential was huge. 74% execution in the red zone. And uh, the Wallabies got zero. But we're trending down. And that's definitely one of the reasons we didn't get the last result. The thing as well, too, defensively here, a couple of times where the opposition yeah. have got nothing. They've got into our red zone, and the fact our defence is held strong, but the fact we're just at 10% in the, uh, the loss to the Pumas is critical in terms of one of the reasons we weren't able to roll over the top of them. And so much talk, and it's come across the global game tabs, defensively right now, it is tough. And this sort of defensive line's Ooh, unheard of. It is, and this is, this is what happens when your defence gets rhythm. This is about the 60-minute mark. You've literally got 14 on their feet, one on the ground, and they just keep getting off the line and knocking us over. We probably do them a favour because we didn't have the variation, which we'll come to in a minute. But you can see the space in behind that they've just said, you can have it, and we can cover it. You put numbers on your feet, though. It's the ability to create line speed. Yeah. Everyone's, it's such a focus in the game now. Is line speed shut the space down, being able to create turnovers, put you under pressure, and it's something the All Blacks have struggled to handle here. Again, trying to work their way outside the opposition half. One of the things that's not there is the distributor. That's that void in the back there. Run us through how important that is. Well, that person's important because he links to the outside players. He's a communicator to the forwards. And if there's a little offload or something like that, he can connect and create the continuity. We see here, get to the outside, the defensive line gets set, they get themselves, committing no one to the breakdown. That's something that is a characteristic. Yep. And one of the other things, they chop, tackle, get you to the ground quickly, no one goes in, no one contests. All of a sudden, what happens here? 15, 15 men on their feet. Unbelievable. Right? We've got four in that breakdown. We're forced to kick the ball back to them. Maybe we could use the short side. We've gone for a bit of a territory play here. But you've got to tip your hats because they defended well, but we're probably not helping ourselves with the one dimension that we've, we have we had in the last game. And that is what we know now, right? We've played against the Wallabies a number of times. The Pumas just the once. They've played another game. So this position, this distributor being in position, why is it critical? You talk about here, this is the game three against Australia. Dominant match, all of a sudden 80%, not as good against the Pumas. How critical is that in terms of manipulating the defence? The, the, the distributor behind those forwards is absolutely critical for the variation. Clearly, we can kick off them, we can uh, move the ball to wide channels, and we can they can help with the continuity if there's a little breach from the forwards. And you can see here in this one here, it's a real simple play. You can see Richie Mawonga, who's one of the best, is really animated as he goes round. He's got options outside him, and he uses it really well on this occasion. And the fact he can be a voice, right? He can Absolutely. be a voice for the players in front of him. He can run good support lines and he can create holes for other players around yeah. him. The one thing that players will do quite often is I'll get attracted to the ball carrier, yes. watching the ball carrier. All of a sudden, it's that release option out the back. They can um, commit the guys in the middle and there it is and he can release to space. Absolutely critical. When the All Blacks get this right, it creates opportunities. Absolutely. He also means that the fourth and fifth defenders uh, have to stay honest. Sam Kane spoke about this in his interview. This was early on in the game. And this is one of the things that said, you know, they were carrying with intent. They wanted to go forward, but they missed opportunities wider. And that was one of them. That should have gone out the back to Richie. Three versus one and a half, full back back. Um, those are the ones that we want to see our wingers running with the ball at pace, 10 metre run up. Um, or maybe the ability to offload, which... Where does that communication uh, have to come from? Oh, it definitely comes from the wide channel, but from Richie Moonga in this case, making sure that the forwards are really clear that he's there. He's animated, he's energetic with his voice, and it becomes an easy, high, 
um, high percentage play. When you aren't getting the advantage line, why the All Blacks are struggling with a lot, where do those conversations have to come from and what changes like this have to be made? Yeah, we'll see. Um, Bowden was late on that one. This is one of the ones where his, his second key role is to support those little breaches there. He's either going to clean on a Joe Moody or keep the ball alive. If they keep that alive. There's a space for Bowden and look Barrett. At, and look at the width out here. Yeah. You've got defenders turning on the, outs on, the, on the outsides, and that's where we thrive. Wide channels, defenders having to turn in, our pace power men on, on the flanks. Once again, a situation with the All Blacks where that player is not in play. Yeah. No release option. Richie Mwanga trying to work his way into it. That's where you've said once again they little can take off. Little, little breach there. A little breach there. Maybe keep the ball in play. Um, but the other thing he would do here is he would speed that ruck up. Because he's there, he can just go on to Satutu, make sure that ball's played. But again, as you can see here, 14 people on their feet. Lots of time to get set. Lots of time to get off the line. We're not the only team that does it, though. The Wallabies, they build their attack in it. They use it slightly different, whether it's the likes of James O'Connor in this case. Matt Tamu has done it for them. But they use similar plays. Yep. And you can see here, when they're active, they're interesting our middle defenders. And that's one of the things we want to see. It was 80% it was in Game 3, 40% in Game 5. It's definitely something that they'll, they'll be working on uh, in preparation for this weekend's game. Just watching here too as well. A lot of these defenders, aren't they? They're watching the ball. Yep. Watching in, so all of a sudden when they track and they try and trace, they're not able to get themselves into a position. And if you can get a defence moving laterally, yep. it can create spaces and holes for players to attack. And often in the application there, there's a little mismatch. So there are two props in the middle there, out to the distributor one, and he's moving at, you know, he's running at um, heavier bodies. This just proves, right, this is a critical yep. part of the game for the All Blacks. Their structure, we talk about it, it's not necessarily about personnel. Now, it's about structure, right? Yes. And I think it's always great when the numbers reflect a system issue. So 80% we had um, the distributor in position in Game 3. Game 5 against the Pume is only 40%. If they want variation, they've got to get that person in place early. So you get your tax structures right and you identify some of the spaces. So then the variety in regards to the kicking game, finding space to kick to, another aspect that the All Blacks did very well early on in the season. Yes. And again, the early on is a really key point. This is in the first 10 minutes. So uh, line break here to Leonard Brown, kicking behind the winger. And that just shapes the defence. It shapes the wingers in the backfield. Talk to me about shaping the defence, what you're talking about. You're saying doing it early. What are some of the variations you can run? So um, that kick's a really good example because that winger now is hesitant. It's like, I want to get up here and put some um, pressure on Argentina, but actually they keep kicking behind me. So I've got to actually... Um, loosen off a little bit. Same short here, side. usually in the short side. I mean, all of a sudden, overloading the short side, how's that affect the defender at the back? Brings them across, then all of a sudden it opens up an opportunity. You've got to think the ground he's got to cover, and then you keep your width. Dane Coles is going to be here on the outside, and that's the thing. You get some momentum, you reload on the short side, you do all those sort of things. Just watch here, though. Decision-making time at the back. Yep. He's watching the short side here, and that's the reason it's open the kick space on the open side. So this is a really good um, example of why the short side jabs are really important to your overall variation. And the accuracy of the kick. Yes. And we talked about some of those things, buying himself time and then keeping width on your attack. And you've got Dane Coles flying down like any good hooker does. Brilliant. Recognising an opportunity yeah. in the outside channel. But there are so many subtleties to it. Same thing here. There's our distributor. He's in play. Positional play, outstanding here. This is now a decision to make. Absolutely. And you can see here, because we gave the, the Argentinians this picture, was we're going to move the ball wide, we're going to move the ball wide, we're going to carry up the guts. What they gave us was this space here. You see the winger flying forward to try and stop Clark. If we can just slide that in behind the defence, it's, it's free space. And we've and got to do that early. We turn the pressure around on the opposition, maybe force them into an error, then they maybe kick to touch. If they kick to touch, they take it out. Yeah. That gives us a platform yeah. in our red zone where we've been so very, very good. Here's the picture, though. You talk about the balance of attack mm. through the course of those two games. We were outstanding game three, game five. It didn't have the balance the All Blacks are looking for. Yeah. And this is a great summary of it. Real two clear different pie charts. That short side and the kicking, attacking kicks in particular, much much smaller on the Pumas game, which made it seem like we were really one-dimensional. Just carries off nine without that distributing in place. So. And sometimes people take a lot of focus, don't they, on position. Yes. How much ball you've got. But isn't the reality what you do with the ball that's Absolutely. important? And the fact that that raw stat doesn't really give you a snapshot of how effective attacks can be. So then... Is that the type of adjustments you will be expecting this weekend from the All Blacks? Do they keep a similar team or do they change their execution and trust the guys who have been there before and had great success? I reckon they'll go with the same group. They might make a couple of tweaks, but it won't be in those key driving areas. 
you know, that maybe a Leonard Brown or the midfielders might have to step up because there will be a focus on getting the distributors in place. But we know Richie Moong and Bowden Barrett are very good in those positions. They've just got to give themselves the opportunity, have variation, and we need to execute early. Does that mean as well, though, we have to control the kicking game and win the kicking metres? The last two tests, the two defeats, we haven't beaten the opposition in controlling territory. What type of kicks do you expect us to do? Lots of variation on the kicks early, maybe from different people. So kicks along the ground and behind the wingers, maybe the cross kick we saw for Leonard Brown in, that, uh, in the third test. Um, I think it's about variation. And I think what they'll try and do is they'll try and have variation of players kicking as well. That is our snapshot here from the War Room at Sky Sport as we prepare for the last test match of the year for the All Blacks against the Pumas. It's going to be one test they'll look forward to. They want to respond. We'll see whether or not that team you've talked about are back to their very, very best.